Hey everybody, it's Colin Nitro from Nitro Maniac TV's wrestling channel, and this is my take on the first ever NXT UK takeover on the WWE Network. It happened on January 12th, 2019, from Blackpool, England. It was NXT TakeOver Blackpool. Just talk about the matches on the special that we've seen on TV. I know that they had taped free matches for uh, this week's NXT UK show. So the opening contest was uh, Zach Gibson and James Drake taking on Mustache Mountain, Trent Seven, and Tyler Bate for the NXT UK Tag Team titles. Uh, which this was the very first match for those belts. So, of course, they were vacant coming in because they had just created the belts. And this was the, the finals of the tournament to crown NXT UK Tag Team Champion. Match time ran 23-45, and Drake and Gibson won with a Ticket to Mayhem, uh, their combo finish over Mustache Mountain. And uh, the match, it's, uh, like, it was a solid 20 minutes for sure. Um, I would almost put it right up there with the uh, Lucha Brothers LAX match from the Homecoming Impact pay-per-view the week before uh, as best tag match so far in 2019 that I've seen. Uh, amazing storytelling. I love the throwback British Bulldog-esque style uh, trunks that both Bait and Seven were wearing in the match. I uh, thought that was really cool. Uh, Drake and Gibson... Uh, just big heel tag team, the two brawlers that'll just kick your ass. And I think that's something that WWE is short of right now is quality wrestling tag teams. Uh, just due to the fact that, uh, well, they themselves have uh, screwed up so many tag teams going on, on the main roster and that stuff. That it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a needed thing to have more tag teams. So it's good to see uh, those, two, uh, I guess, Two entities. They'll be they'll be feuding for a while over the belts. I think I think Mustache Mountain will definitely, at some point in 2019, have the NXT tag UK tag team championships around their waist for sure. Uh, maybe it happens. You know, uh, Access Weekend at Mania. Maybe it's a SummerSlam thing. But there you go. Next match was supposed to be Travis Banks versus Jordan Devlin, but Devlin attacked Banks as he walked into the building, so the Kiwi Buzzsaw could not make the match. So. Out goes Banks. Uh, well, they, another attack before the match, I should say, too, uh, where Devlin attacked Banks. Uh, well, actually, Banks initiated the attack, I should say, by trying to jump Devlin before the bell. But uh, Devlin turned it around and started attacking the knee and that stuff and pretty much put Banks out of commission. So out goes Banks and in walks in Finn Balor. So we had the battle of OG Balor, Versus Baby Balor. Um, it, they gave it more time than I figured they would. Uh, an 11.45 match runtime is very flattering for this one. Uh, because I thought that you could probably... Uh, this would be the one case where I think a squash could have worked. And it wouldn't have hurt Devlin at all. Because Devlin got all his heat prior to the match. I think he was just very... You know, very heelish and got over big time with the with the live house and that stuff. That that live house in Blackpool was insane. They were just chanting and cheering the entire night. Um, you know, as UK crowds are oft to do. It's, you know, it, it was just, it, it it was very surprising to have a 11:45 match. Uh, definitely the biggest match of Devlin's career up to this point for sure. Uh, sharing the ring with Finn Balor as a heel with Balor being the face going into this match. And um, it was it was very passable, very good, a very, uh, you know, you could have taken that match and put it on Monday Night Raw or, or Tuesday Night SmackDown, and it would have been a very passable match. The only real down part of this card to me was the Mastiff-Eddie Dennis uh, street fight, uh, no disqualification match, I should say, uh, that happened on the card next. It was only about 10 minutes long, but... Uh, it, it really didn't do too much for me. Uh, I think they just need to establish both guys more. And uh, it, it was just there on the card. As simple as that. The next match was for the NXT UK Women's Championship. Uh, the challenger, Tony Storm, coming back to the ring. I think this was her first match on NXT TV for a long time. Uh, since uh, Rhea Ripley defeated her for the uh, NXT UK Women's Championship. And, of course, all the... Uh, 
outside, shall we call it, I don't want to say distractions, but news with Tony leading into this thing and that stuff. She's, she's had a rough month. Um, you know, it's a great rebound for her to walk out as the NXT Women's Champion, which she did here, uh, defeating Rhea Ripley. Um, this is definitely a feud that will have a rematch, and I think it's actually the stronger of the two NXT brands right now for that belt. Uh, just because the Shayna Baszler, uh, Bianca Belair match coming up in Phoenix for the NXT Women's title at this point on paper really doesn't do much for me. But, um, you know, I'm going to be there live, so we'll see if it translates actually to a better match live. But uh, this here I could connect with, with Tony and, and Rhea a little bit more uh, as a storyline and that stuff going forward. Uh you know, WWE kind of hijacking the We Support Tony hashtag on Twitter is a WWE thing that they would do. Um, you know, kind of turning it around. Um, you know, the initial point of the We Support Tony hashtag was we're supporting a wrestler or a entertainer that we love to watch, you know, in a situation where she needed help. You just, just you know from from people and and, and just being cyber bullied after the the unfortunate uh, uh, incident of the of the uh, the private photos being leaked right so that was the initial part of it and then WWE kind of turning it around to say oh yeah she's got this groundswell of of base from the WWE universe and support from the WWE universe and that's a very oft WWE thing to do but uh you know, I, I I still think, you know, the organic support is there and the, you know, I guess the manufactured support will kind of blend in with the organic support for Tony going forward. But, yeah, so if you're accounting with this relatively new brand for WWE, the uh, tag champions are heels, the women's champions are face, and going into the main event, the NXT UK champion was a face. What happened? Pete Dunne defeated Joe Coffey in the main event for the NXT UK Championship. Pete Dunne was the champion, so his 600-plus day reign continues as NXT UK Champion. Uh, it was a very long match. Um, I expected a, uh, a a real decent match, and it was. It was the best match on the card. I, I enjoyed it from front to back. Uh, great storytelling by both guys. Um, you know, it, it was real hard-hitting type match so if you enjoyed a strong style approach it, it would fit in on any new japan card i think uh perfectly it felt very natural it, it didn't feel clunky at all during during the match itself and of course a big reveal at the end as they were signing off with pete dunn with the belt and then all of a sudden walter's music hits and effectively walter becomes the next in line to challenge pete dunn that's a match that i'm really looking forward to see uh, but of course, Joe Coffey is still there, and Wolfgang and Mark, Mark Coffey are still there. So it's, it, I imagine that that would be, if it's not Walter and Pete Dunne one on one, I think it would be Walter, Pete Dunne, and Joe Coffey in a triple threat for the NXT UK title would be the next real big thing we see going forward from the UK brand. All in all, uh, it was a very, it, it had the feel of the old school NXT takeovers from when they first started doing them on the network back in 2014 and 2015-ish. Uh, uh, still a little bit of unfamiliarity with the uh, European talent pool and that stuff that they, they've, they've kind of cultivated over there. Uh, I think that will just take more and more shows and more and more big cards to present where people get really into it NASA. So I'll give the entire show a uh, 8 out of 10, very passable show uh, from front to back, very digestible length too, at clocking in at just under 3 hours. I think the entire length was like 248 or something. And uh, expect more good things from this brand in the coming weeks and months. All right folks, thanks for sticking with me. I'm Kelly Nitro later days. Happy wrestling watching. We'll see you next time on Nitromaniac TV's wrestling channel.